My name's Zoe Burt, um, here in my studio in South East London. It's a garden studio. I'm a textile artist and designer, previously worked in fashion, and I love working with natural materials and sharing that with as many people as possible. I love working with craft because I love being creative. It's such a fun thing to do, to get out there and be experimenting. I think one of my first experiences of uh, seeing colour from plants was getting blackberry stains on my fingers. And that was really exciting, sort of seeing the potential for colour and making lotions and potions with my friends, you know, putting grass, mud, trying things out. And all of this kind of sparked and fed into my practice later on. I'm so inspired by nature. It's been an absolute inspiration and muse um, ever since I became awake to the world and it's really exciting and I feel there's so much depth to learn. It's a continual lesson um, and one of the particular things I love working with is colour from nature. So there's plants which amazingly give you colour as well. For example, even starting off with something like onions, which is from uh, uh, lots of people use in their kitchens, can give you most amazing kind of oranges and browns. And then in history, you can find out that there were many colours that were used to dye fabrics and cloths up until 1856. So that's less than 200 years ago when all our textiles and clothes and tapestries and home furnishings would have been dyed with either plants or insects. And that's quite remarkable and exciting to learn about that as well. What I love about my job is sharing the inspiration from nature and all the different potential of that creatively. Um, I'm a teacher as well and I teach natural dyeing and in my classes um, I always encourage people to bring with them what's abundant and local and I've learned so much from that exchange as well. For example, a student came recently who had curly hazel in her garden and we were working with that and we got the most beautiful vibrant greens and green is actually quite a difficult colour to get in natural dyeing which is ironic because we have so much green everywhere all around us. The easiest colour to get is yellow. Um, so I find that really exciting, that exchange that you get with students as well, with people bringing different things in and the experimental side of the stuff as well. The, the confidence it gives you to try things out and try things out together and working in groups, you can often get more done than you can when you're working individually as well. And that's really exciting to have that kind of group energy and um, delight and wonder at what you, what you can make. For teachers, as inspiration for how to work with natural materials, I'd really recommend asking students to bring in things from their kitchen waste. So for example, it could be cleaned avocado stones, it could be onion skins, and I'd always separate the brown onion skins from the red onion skins because you get different colours from both. Uh, then tea bags, you could use used ones or fresh ones as well. Turmeric powder is, is another one that's really useful, or pomegranate skins in season, which is around the kind of November, autumn, time. All of these things are things that people might be using in their kitchens every week and then they can save up and feel that they're part of it, collaborating, bringing something in to be part of the lesson. And uh, all you need then is a boiled kettle of water and maybe some Pyrex bowls or a glass jars quite good because then you can see the colour actually forming as you put the hot water on it. You can also use things like old bed sheets or old pillowcases but it is important that they are pure cotton rather than poly cotton because you don't get such strong colours on them. Uh, another thing I recommend is using like a ball of wool because then everyone could get a sample of, of the strand of wool as well. They could work in little colour groups as well so you could have like a little team working on the turmeric, little team maybe working on blackberries and they could have their colour and they could be colour keepers and then do their dyeing, put their fabric in and then share the samples. And um, what's also really exciting if you want to extend that is using simple kitchen chemistry to develop your colours even further further so you can think, use things like lemon juice for acid, you can use baking powder or bicarbonate soda as alkalis which can also shift your colours and natural metals as well like iron or copper which also can really shift colours as well but yeah it's a really fun thing to do in the classroom. I've done previously worked with schools before I managed to do a class in you know a whole year in the morning and in the afternoon as well and if everyone's working collaboratively you can get some really fun results from that too. So three artists I would recommend as inspiration would be Darren Apiagi, 
who works with wood, um, fallen foraged wood, which is then turned into beautiful sculptures and vessels. He's based in London at the Cockpit Arts, but also shows internationally as well and sells his work. Um, another artist who I find inspiring is uh, uh, somebody who's Brighton based called Alan Brown of Hedgerow Couture on Instagram. He made a dress from nettles from foraged fibres local to him. It took seven years to make. It also involved storytelling aspects of him grieving for his father and his wife. Um, a very powerful tale. Uh, there's a trailer you can watch online and there's a film also that's come out. And finally, someone who's new to me that I discovered just recently uh, is called Andrea Bowers. She's based over in California. She's um, an eco-feminist and an activist. For example, she went and did a protest recently for a local forest to her that was going to get bulldozed for a road. Unfortunately, the forest couldn't get saved. Um, but it was important for her still to be part of that process, her protest. And she went and gathered up the fallen wood from the remains of the forest and incorporated it into a powerful art piece which is now being shown internationally as well.